Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to shoot waterfalls. I am in the Jura region in France and it's just a wonderful place if you love waterfalls. I've discovered amazing waterfalls that are just like so stunning, so amazing to see and I can't recommend this region enough to you, like really. So now I'm going down, so I'm walking the very beautiful forest. I guess you can hear the water and the waterfall is very close by. And I'm gonna walk a little bit until there and uh, I'm gonna show you this beautiful waterfall and tell you a little more about how to catch a waterfall, the gear you need, the parameters in your camera that you need to set and of course some composition tips. So let's get going. That's the one. I mean, here on the camera, it kind of looks very small, but it's not that small. I'm using a wide angle at 10 millimeters, so it kind of looks small, but trust me, it's not. That's the one I'm gonna capture today and show you some, uh, some composition now. But before that, um, I thought it would be interesting to uh, tell you a little more about when uh, to shoot waterfalls. And uh, the first thing is, like, if you're shooting in places like France or maybe Germany, Spain, Italy and those, those countries that are more like Western Europe and Southern uh, Europe then you might want to uh, come to shoot waterfalls in spring after the snow is melting in the mountains so that you get like very good water flow because what's happening is that during the summer if it's a hot summer then the, the, like, the snow will melt and everything will dry out and you won't have a very good flow of water afterwards or maybe even no flow at all and the the other thing as well is that you might uh, want to come in autumn like in fall season because if there is like but well into the fall season like maybe october november when the, the when the rain will have, will come back and then you will be able to have again some nice water flow and then of course after during the winter then everything is likely to freeze if it's uh, in, in cold places like mountains and so on. So that's one good point to consider. The other thing to consider when shooting waterfalls is the time of the day you're coming. So now I am very lucky because it's a cloudy day, it's overcast and basically I can come any time during the day and I will have like good conditions to shoot because nothing will be too bright and the water won't be too highlighted and so that's gonna be fine but in certain cases when there is like a sunny day then you will have strong light from the sun coming through a forest for example like I am now and then everything will be blown out like the highlights on the water will be very strong and it's gonna be very difficult to uh, catch this up in post-processing so it's better then to come in the evening or early in the morning and to get the soft light of the sun where you get like nice colors on top of that like orangish color like very yellowish orangish and that's gonna be amazing so consider well the time of the day you're coming and uh, the weather conditions of course me to my next point which is the use of CPL filter so in case you guys want to know more about the CPL filters then you can check out this video where I'm sharing all you need to know about CPL filters so basically a CPL filter is an amazing tool that will help you remove unwanted reflection glares flares in your photographs and that's especially very useful when you're shooting very close to water like I'm gonna do now and you might have like really strong unwanted reflections and on top of that, it brings like contrast, saturation, and a lot of details into your pictures. So that's a very useful tool. It's not the one I'm using the most, but when I need it, I'm very happy to have it. So in case you need to have one filter in your kit, that should be a CPL filter. Trust me, you won't regret it. 
Another piece of gear which is extremely useful is an ND filter. So the ND filter cuts off the light in your photographs and helps you lengthen the, your shutter speed which creates this amazing smoothie and milky water in your photographs. And you might want to use it, you might not want to use it depending on how strong the light is in your scene. My recommendation in general is not to use a too strong one so that you get the pictures that uh, that you will shoot at maybe um, like 10 seconds or so that will be uh, that will just make your water so milky and so not interesting when you look at the picture so i like to create still some dynamic in my pictures when i shoot uh, like long exposure so yeah you can uh, you have to test when you're on site and you see which one is best for you and sometimes just the cpl is sufficient because it cuts up sufficient light so that you shoot at the appropriate duration. So now let's get downstairs and I'm gonna share with you some nice compositions. All right, so I reached my first composition point and that's just amazing. I guess you can see it on the video here. I'm not facing the camera towards the uh, waterfall, otherwise the microphone will uh, pretty much record most of the water sound and, uh, and not so much of me. So what you can see here on the video is that we've got here basically at the bottom here, like a piece of wood that's like really framing the whole waterfall and the whole surrounding. And that's just wonderful. And then we've got like a middle ground, some nice stones that are like really green. And on the background, I'm having here the waterfall that we can see the water flows here on the left hand side. And this is just amazing. Like it creates already a sense of depth and also like a greatness a sense of greatness so sense of depth like intimate because of the piece of wood and in general like yeah intimacy and greatness <laughs> that's a really cool composition I'm, I'm very happy i found that one and that's the thing like when you're like looking for composition try to frame your composition when you're like in those kind of places find something unusual and this is definitely unusual that's something like I see many people coming around and not so many are actually using the um, using the tree. They are like just all going right in front of the waterfall and just that doesn't really make sense to me. So I'm also using my uh, CPL filter which is uh, doing its job properly. I mean if you look on the video it's just like doing what it's supposed to do. So it removes all the glares and flares so that's really great. And um, I'm shooting at half a second now which makes the water like sufficiently milky but keep some structures as well in the river which is uh, cool and uh, I'm doing a bracketing because it's a little bit brighter than I expected now um, kind of the the sky was overcast before and now there is come some blue sky with clouds so yeah it's a uh, condition change but it's still good to, to shoot the waterfall so I'm very happy about that So I found my second composition. I make it in a portrait orientation and I'm gonna show you quickly. My camera is here, the waterfall is there and there is one stone and there is a beautiful stone right in front. So you can see it here on the screen what I'm recording with the other camera. Basically, we have a stone on the foreground, patches of um, green stones afterwards as a middle ground and still our beautiful waterfall on the background and I truly love this kind of compositions where we are really having an imposing subject right on the on the foreground that kind of truly leads the eyes and that kind of sets the scene and that helps also to create a, a sense of minimalism in the whole picture because you're just really focusing on that big stone which is on the foreground and then of course the rest of the image comes naturally uh, to your eyes so to me that's a very nice composition and uh, that's something I like to look for but I still have another idea and I see that there are a lot of a lot of roots like you can see a lot of roots here so I'm really trying to uh, to look for a good one because they are not always super placed but uh, I will need to, uh, to to look for it and I guess I'm gonna find a very nice compos composition with that I did 
didn't find a root as I was looking for because there was no tree uh, very close to the water and the roots I found they were like like not very well placed and I could not find the composition I wanted but I found that composition here which is uh, really amazing it was very close to the waterfall and um, there was basically uh, those few grasses on the on the ground and some rocks as well some boulders and the waterfall was very close by uh, on the back so it was like really nice to uh, to shoot but also a little bit challenging for two reasons so the first one is that the wind started blowing around and uh, basically there was a lot of uh, water coming into uh, into the camera so i had to wait for the perfect time to shoot when the wind calmed down and the second thing is that since i'm shooting at a lower speed then i had to adjust very well the speed of my uh, my shutter speed to shoot the foreground which was moving a little bit because of the wind and for that i used the auto iso and that would be the topic of another uh, of another video that i'm gonna realize just on this to to explain you how to photograph well moving subject in low light composition I want to make and I saw a beautiful place to do it but I need to put my feet in the water so I'm gonna get back to my camper and uh, take my boots because the water is fairly freezing I mean it's really coming from the mountains so I guess uh, it's kind of snow melting and uh, yeah put my feet into it and it was like really cold so I'm gonna pick this up and we we'll speak in a bit picked up my boots I'm all good and now I'm gonna put my feet in the water. All right, that's the moment of truth, let's go. So now that I'm on the other side, the idea is to go to two locations. So one is this one here where we have the water flowing. So I'm going to take pictures in mostly uh, landscape orientation, I guess, but I'm going to try as well in a uh, portrait orientation. By being very close to the water, I will have the direct water flow coming to me. And I guess that can give very nice feeling of, um, of motion in the picture. And that's going to be great with the waterfall and the motion coming to me. Like we really have the feeling of being in the picture. And the second location, that's going to be that one here, where there are like a lot of small patches of uh, grass and it's very green, very, very uh, perfect. And what's good is that not so many people are going there. So everything is intact. So I'm trying to be very careful and cautious not to break anything. But in general, that's going to be amazing. So I'm going to go shooting and I'm going to share the picture with you immediately. So I'm finally done with my shooting, it got really hard to stop because there were like so many compositions, so many opportunities, but well, everything has an end, so I had to leave. And uh, in general, so the thing that you need to remember from, uh, from this video is that, well, go to these kind of places when there is overcast days, at sunrise or sunset time, bring a CPL, that will be the best tool that you will have to make your picture really stand out. Use an ND if you need to, if you need to lower the, your speed because it's too bright. Use an ND filter, that can be always helpful. And finally, for the compositions, look for very nice foregrounds, look for water flows, look for flowers, for stones, for anything, and keep your subject on the background, keep your beautiful waterfall on the background, and trust me, you won't regret it. It requires a little bit of work to adjust and to start being like 
really comfortable doing it. But trust me, towards the end, when you manage it, it really pays off. So, all right. I hope that you have a lot of fun with this video. And with that, I wish you good luck with your photography and see you next week for new adventures.